Today we're going to be talking about why Matthew being a tax collector is such a big deal, and why the other disciples kind of despise him for it, especially Peter. So, stick around. Welcome to this Night Life, where we look at creativity through the lens of Christianity. And today we're going to be looking at our last portion of episode 3 of season 2 of The Chosen. And this part is really interesting. Basically, we see as Peter calls out Matthew for being a tax collector. So let's talk about why Matthew being a tax collector is such an important thing and why the other disciples have an issue with it, because they certainly do. So episode three has been different than any other episode in The Chosen so far. They even had a 15 minute scene at the beginning of this episode with no cuts and no edits. You can see our video about that right here. But the rest of the episode is just them sitting around a fire and they start talking about things that maybe the disciples would have talked about day to day. What it's like being a Jew, how they're experiencing travels with Jesus, and old stories that they had from before they started following Jesus. So it's really interesting to kind of get a look into their lives and to connect more with the disciples. So let's jump into the scene where we start with James and Thomas and the rest of the disciples talking about what it's like to be a Jew and how it makes them feel. And quickly it kind of escalates. So let's get into it. I had to work so hard and so fast, I ended up spilling some of the fish back in the water. But I finished just in time. And I was breathing so hard, I vomited on the shore. <laughs> <laughs> you had to wait two whole days to clean it up. <laughs> oh, uh, sorry. I've grown to love being Jewish. And I've grown to love following the law, but it can be exhausting. Following the law or being Jewish? Both. It always has been. Even before the occupation. Yes, but aren't we used to it by now? Hasn't it made us stronger? I don't get it, if I'm honest. I don't know why God has allowed the occupation. I'd have to ask him more about that why this has been allowed for so long. So right here, we see them talking about just being a Jew in general, that it's hard, that not only do you have to follow the law and do everything perfectly, but you also have to be under Roman occupation. And Thomas, he straight up tells it like it is. He's a pretty straight talker throughout all of the episodes that we've seen him in. And here he's speaking truth. He's saying, I don't understand. I don't get it. Why would God allow this to happen? I thought we were supposed to be his chosen people. And I'm sure that a lot of Jews felt that way in Jesus' time where they felt like they were being oppressed and put down. And so this is a hard thing for them to swallow. So much so that many Jews today, they, they don't believe that Jesus was the Messiah because they believed that the Messiah would come in a different way. But let's continue watching. It's hard to feel like the chosen people. I've been there. But it's all worth it now, yes? The wait is over. So here Rama says something that's really profound, but it's all over now, right? The wait is over. The Messiah is here, right? We know that Jesus is with us. In fact, we're traveling with him right now, right? And this is a profound revelation for them. It's something that they've been waiting for for hundreds and hundreds of years, right? Their whole entire lifetime, they've been told about the Messiah and how he's going to come and, and all of these misconceptions about him. But really here, they're standing in the presence of the Messiah. They're working with him. They're traveling with him. The wait is over. Hey guys, real quick, I just wanted to talk to you about our Promote the Hope campaign. So these are wholesale items, a shirt, a long sleeve, and a hoodie that just have our logo on it. If you guys wanna be repping us and helping us out, that'd be great if you could purchase one. We're not getting any money from this. Basically, no profit will go to us, but it'll be a really cool way for you guys to get more involved in the channel. Also, if you don't want any of those, we do have some affiliate links in the description of our channel to get some chosen products. So if you want a devotional or a shirt, you guys can look down there and uh, we'd love to have you buy some of those. Basically, a little bit of a kickback will come back to us if you buy those from our affiliate links. So yeah, thanks. Let's get into the meat of what I wanna talk about. Next, Peter kind of calls out Matthew. So let's watch this. What about you? What do you mean? Has it been difficult for you all this time? The occupation, following Jewish law. My life has not been easy. Oh, oh, it hasn't. What was more painful for you? Escaping Roman persecution by working for them or escaping your guilt with all the money? And now you're catching up on Torah and wanting to follow the law. 
Why now all of a sudden? Why not all the other times you had the chance? Simon? No, no, John, I want to know. Mary had horrible trauma. She didn't choose all that happened to her. What's your excuse? What do you want me to say? I don't know what you want from me. An apology. What? Simon's not wrong. He could be more delicate about it, but you did choose to work for them. Here, Andrew says something that's true. Simon's not wrong. Maybe Simon could say it in a better way, a gentler way, but he's not wrong. In Jewish society, tax collectors were considered to be the bottom rung of sinners, right? The, the worst of the worst that could possibly be. Even going as far as some of the leaders in Jewish society said that tax collectors could not be redeemed. Even if they were to quit, even if they were to come back to community, this is how heavy of a job that Matthew had. He gave up everything to become a tax collector. He gave up everything for riches, for money. And so even though in the show we see him as this lovable character who kind of doesn't get it quite, I think in actuality, Matthew was pretty ruthless. He would have been cast out from society. Nobody would have wanted to be around him. He would have been bribing people. He would have been extorting people. He would have been not a very good person. And I think this is exactly why Jesus asked him to follow him. So I wanted to break this down just a little bit. In Jewish society, there's a few things that you had to pay taxes for. First, you had the temple tax. So everybody that was in the community had to pay a certain amount to help keep up the temple and to help things run smoothly within the Jewish religion. For the same reasons we needed money today, they needed to tax their people as well. But on top of that, Israel was under Roman occupation. And so the Romans asked for taxes as well <laughs> to run all of their stuff. And so the Romans would go to these communities and ask for specific amounts and taxes, but they didn't want to put their own people in charge of collecting all of those taxes. Generally, what would happen is someone from the community would come to them and they would bid and they would say, I could get you X in taxes. And then someone else would say, I would, I could get you two X in taxes. And then someone else would come and they'd say, I could give you three X in taxes. And so the Romans would pick the person who could get them the most in taxes. And it was very profitable for Rome. But in actuality, whoever was the tax collector of the time, not only would they get the amount that Rome required, but they would get much, much more to the point where the tax collectors were the richest out of basically anybody in ancient Israel. As you can see in season one, Matthew's doors are made of gold. His clothes are amazing compared to everybody else. And his house is beautiful. He has several pairs of shoes where some people may not have even had one good pair of sandals. To be honest, Matthew is stealing from the community. We can see that in how rich he is because Rome is not paying him. He's just taking money from the community. The distinction between how rich Matthew was and how poor the rest of the disciples were is huge. And I don't think we get a full picture of that even within the chosen. But Matthew would have been very, very rich, very, very wealthy. And he kind of gave that all up to follow Jesus. So what does that mean for the rest of the disciples? It means that certainly they would have been very against Matthew being part of the group, at least at first. Matthew being there means that they would have to suck up their pride and deal with him on a day-to-day -day basis. This is why we see Simon Peter, right? He's, he's very upset almost every time that he has to talk to Matthew because not only is Matthew a tax collector, but in The Chosen, Matthew was Peter's tax collector. So it's a totally different dynamic there, right? Not only are you the lowest of low sinners, not only are you the scumbag for my community that is taking people's money, Matthew is taking Peter's money. And so it becomes this even more personal thing for him where Matthew really did hurt Peter. And that's why Andrew chimes in and he says, well, he's not wrong, but let's keep watching. And you made my life even harder than it already was. And you haven't apologized. No, 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 don't say it. I don't want you to apologize. It doesn't matter. What would hear him say sorry do? I won't forgive it anyway. What keeps putting you in authority? Who are you to forgive or not to forgive? What, you're on his side? No, of course not, but you've had your problems too. What about apologizing for what you almost did to us with the Romans? I didn't go through with it. I was trying to save my family's life, and I love you, John, but that's not something you have to worry about when Zeb and Salome are looking out for you but you put me in a desperate position where I did things I would never have done otherwise. And I've repented for them. And John and James, I am sorry, but I didn't go through with it. What is your excuse? I was a successful businessman, and yet I was always behind. He wasn't your tax collector. You quit defending him. I want an answer. Hey, you're new. Do you even know what it's like to be Jewish? 
to suffer for centuries and centuries because of it, but to still commit to it? To protect our heritage even though it never stops being painful because the one comfort we have is to know that we're doing it together. That we're all suffering together, but if, if we just wait a little longer, if we hold tight just a little more, we'll have rescue because we're chosen, all of us. And you betrayed that, and you spit on it! I can't forgive it. I'll never forgive it. All right. You said what you needed to say. Sit down, Simon. You sit down first. And so here the argument gets really intense. And we begin to see the true meaning behind what Simon Peter is saying. He's not mad that Matthew was rich. I don't think he's really even mad that Matthew was a tax collector, but he's mad at the fact that Matthew is a Jew and he betrayed what it means to be a Jew. He betrayed the community. He betrayed Peter personally. So Peter doesn't understand. Why would you do that? You're a Jew. We're supposed to be the chosen ones. We're supposed to be waiting for the Messiah together. And this whole time you've been against us. This whole time you've been making it even harder on us than it already was. Matthew chose to work with the Romans. Matthew was not a good guy, but Jesus still chose him. And I think that's one of the things that we're understanding here. This whole episode, right? This whole end of the episode, they start this big fight and they're, it's about to explode. But then Jesus walks by tired and hurt. And if you haven't seen that part of the episode, you can go right here as we review that part as well. But as Jesus walks by, everything else melts away and they all start to realize maybe who I was, what happened in the past, maybe none of that matters anymore. And they all just go quiet and the episode ends. This is a hard thing for them. And I'm sure that we're gonna see more of this in the future, whether it's about Matthew being a tax collector or some other things that have happened in the past. This is some hard stuff. It's not easy to start to follow Christ and then forget about everything that happened beforehand. We know that, don't we? Because when we follow Christ, it doesn't mean that the rest of our life didn't happen. We still have to face the consequences of the things that we did. We still have to deal with all of that stuff. But Jesus carries the burden for us. And how amazing is that? Let me know below what you guys think of Matthew. What you guys think of him being a tax collector and everything else. How do you think that the disciples would interact with each other? Is this an accurate depiction in The Chosen? I think they're doing a really good job of discovering kind of how the disciples would fight, but it's gonna be so interesting to see how that dynamic kind of fleshes out, to see how the leaders of Peter, James, and John kind of come through and start to lead the group in a new way. Let me know below what you guys wanna see in the future. We're gonna be hopefully moving back to season one soon. So let me know what you guys wanna see in the comments below. Hey, if you wanna like this video, that would be huge for us. When you like the video, basically what it's telling YouTube is, hey, I like this video, please send it to someone else so that they can watch it too. And every time you like or comment, it sends the video out to more people. So we would really, really love if you did that. Also, if you haven't subscribed, about 70% of you or more are not subscribed to this channel. So if you'd like to subscribe, I would love to have you as part of our community. If you wanna do some live streams of upcoming episodes from season two, then we would love to have you over on Patreon. We're thinking about doing some live streams as the episodes are airing to kind of talk about it live. So if you wanna be a part of that and chat with us, that'd be amazing. You guys can join our Patreon for $5, $10, or $25 if you're really, really into our channel. I hope you like this video. We'll see you on the next one, and thanks for being part of our community. Peace.